college. The most notorious time in a young adult's life. A time for experimentation. No, we're not talking about that kind. We meant experimentation and learning new things outside the box. But today's college is one-size-fits-all drivel, labeled as education, that's often a waste of time for those who regret the multiple two-day-long hangovers from frat parties. These days, it's almost cliche to say student loan debt is your excuse for being broke. But it's no joke. The cost of tuition and fees have outpaced overall inflation for decades. For young adults, attending college is an expected obligation. We're all taught in high school, a college degree increases lifetime earnings by a million dollars on average. But not all degrees are created equal. We're going to show you how the college of today is much different than your parents' college, and the end result may not actually be worth it for the 70% of high school graduates enrolling in higher education. This is The College Bubble 2.0. Let's start off with a simple fact that may shock you. In just the past three years, there are 25 times as many colleges and universities charging over $50,000 per year in tuition. In the same three years, the average American worker's wage has only grown by a lousy 2%. Because of the rapid increase in tuition, today's students need to take on much more debt to attend than ever before. At Ohio universities, working full-time for minimum wage year-round would leave today's students about $3,200 short of being able to pay for their tuition, fees, room, and board. 30 years ago, the minimum wage was enough to pay all the same college bills and still have $3,500 left over. Paying for college has become increasingly out of reach for the average attendee. The amount of college loan debt has more than tripled in the last 10 years, from just $400 billion in the year 2005 now there's over $1.3 trillion in student debt in the United States. Over 40 million Americans have a college loan debt. The average balance is nearly $30,000. What's even more scary about the student loan bubble is about a third of the graduates with loan debt are already missing payments. This makes $450 billion of loans in delinquency, and this is only rising as prices continue to skyrocket. The delinquency rate is up 50% in the last 10 years. In the third quarter of 2014, the three-year default rate was almost 14%. Over the last 20 years, tuition has risen 128% for public four-year schools and 69% for private nonprofit four-year schools. In the same period, government aid to undergraduate college students, including grants and loans, has tripled or increased roughly 248%. Why did the price tag for attending college rise during the biggest technology boom of countless innovations that could improve the education system? This may sound counterintuitive, but government policies enacted to help students afford college have a side effect of raising the cost of attending college. In the 2010 to 2011 school year, 51% of all grant aid came from the federal government. 10 years earlier, only 34% was federal aid. Students took out over $120 billion in education loans in 2012, up from $53 billion in 2001. Over 90% of these loans were government-backed. New technologies have made it unfathomably easier to learn in today's world compared to 20 years ago yet the cost of a college degree still skyrocketed. In their 2015 requested budget, the Department of Education asked for $69 billion, an increase of 5% over the 2013 budget just two years ago. Of this, 38% is targeted for Pell Grants and student aid. That's an increase of 5.4% in Pell Grants in just two years. Private colleges raise their tuition 65 cents for every dollar increase in federal subsidized loans and 55 cents for Pell Grants given to low-income students. Rising tuition costs from increased government intervention kick-started in 1978 under Jimmy Carter when the Middle Income Student Assistance Act was passed. This expanded the Basic Educational Opportunity Grant eligibility and raised the guaranteed student loan program income ceiling to make loans available to more than just low-income students. This bill helped drive up college enrollment rates from 25% to 
to its peak of 44% in 2010. Over 1.8 million bachelor's degrees were awarded to the class of 2015, with three out of every four seniors graduating four-year colleges having student loan debt. That's nearly one and a half million new debtors each year. Of the 1.36 trillion in student debt nationwide, almost 1.2 trillion is government loans. A lot of increased cost of college is going to fund expansion projects and newly hired administrators. In 2014, colleges and universities commenced construction on $11.4 billion worth of projects, a 13% increase in the previous year. It's the largest dollar value of construction starts since 2008. You can't go to a big state university and not see construction. Making it even worse is the fact that these schools are taking on debt to pay for the construction. Rather than take advantage of increasing productivity due to technology, since 1987, federal figures show the number of administrators and professional employees has more than doubled, vastly outpacing the growth of students or faculty. From 1987 to 2012, universities and colleges collectively added over 517,000 administrators and professional employees. Overall spending by higher education institutions tripled from 1975 to 2005 to over $325 billion a year. In a 2010 study, it was found that from 1993 to 2007, spending on administration rose almost twice as fast as funding for research and teaching at 198 leading U.S. universities. It's no wonder that even when adjusted for inflation, tuition and fees have doubled since 1987. Purdue University pays their acting provost $313,000 a year. From 2002 to 2012, the growth rate of administration employees at Purdue grew by eight times the rate of tenured faculty. In 2013, 42 private institution presidents had an over $1 million salary. The average salary is $400,000. A full-time professor at Harvard only makes half of that in a year. Shirley Jackson, the president of Polytech Institute in New York, made over $7 million, as well as being given a large mansion, first-class air travel, and a chauffeured luxury car to transport her all around campus. On average, a private college president's salary accounts for an appalling half a percent of the entire institution's budget. The University of California's total payroll of $11.2 billion grew to $11.7 billion from 2012 to 13, an increase of over 4%. This is nearly half of its operating budget of $24.1 billion. Most of that payroll goes to over 135,000 staff members compared to 19,000 actual professors that means there's 6.6 .6 staff members for every teacher on campus. Additionally, because the UC system pledges 100% of tuition to maintain its bond rating, it's assuring bond financers that it will further raise tuition prices to keep borrowing more. Higher tuition means the UC system can borrow more money to finance lucrative construction projects. UC managers also engaged in the risky derivative market with interest rate swaps. At this point, we should be asking why is the public higher education helping fund Wall Street bankers? Too many young adults are being suckered into this money-hungry system of antiquated methods of teaching and overpaid administrators benefiting off the mass deception that everyone needs to go to college to have any success in life. Today, you almost see the opposite. Only 40% of full-time students actually earn a degree within their first four years. Less than 60% get their supposed four-year degree within six years. Only 44% of grads expect to make more than $30,000 their first year out of college. Adding insult to injury, the jobs graduates expected to be there for them in today's economy simply aren't there. In 2010, only 62% of graduates had jobs requiring a college degree, and a measly 27% had a job even relating to the major they studied in college. In 2011, nearly 54% of college graduates under 25 were out of work or underemployed. We just don't see why a high school graduate would jump into college. These days, young adults need to think harder about their future without assuming college is the right step for them. Alternative solutions are popping up rapidly. Millennials are the first generation of freelance natives. 
They're embracing freelancing in a way no other generation has in a long time. And now, they're the majority of the workforce. With the internet of everything and online education abundant in all fields, unless you need a specific license mandated by the government to do business, we just don't see why a high school graduate jump into college. We're not against college under all circumstances, but at the very least, consider taking a year off before spending tens of thousands of dollars, or worse, borrowing money and getting into debt. The repercussions of the student loan bubble are already being felt. As we predicted in the College Loan Bubble documentary of March 2014, college attendance is dropping, falling over 2% in 2014 alone. This is about 400,000 students deciding not to take the route of huge, burdensome debt. Attendance has now decreased four years in a row. Since the spring of 2011, colleges have lost over 1 million new students. To us, this is a step in the right direction. But it will not fix the giant loan bubble that still exists and is about to burst. To find out what you can do instead of becoming a college debt slave, get our free report on 50 alternatives to college at crushthestreet.com college. You'll also get our 25 extra income ideas report.